come on. Quiet, please. Act two is about to start. <sighs> Runway just made its next move. Act one has become act two. If you've seen my earlier videos, you know I used act one's lip sync for quite a while. It was a clever way to give voice to the silent faces I used in my intros, especially when no other tool really nailed that part. Then VO3 came out and changed the game, but now things might shift again. So the question is, can Runway take back the lead? That's exactly what I want to find out in this tutorial. But before we even think about creating videos with the new Act 2 feature, we should take a closer look at the actual requirements. As you can probably imagine, I've been testing this extensively since the feature dropped, and one thing is already clear, not every image or video works. Let me show you a simple chart I put together. It's grouped into four categories, robots at the top, animals below that, then human characters, and at the bottom, illustrations and other fantasy creatures. Now I'm pretty sure you can spot a face in every single one of these images, but Runway doesn't always agree. In fact, it almost feels like the platform itself isn't quite aligned. Act 1 and Act 2 sometimes treat the same image differently. Some of the ones marked with a red X here, supposedly unusable, actually worked in Act 1. Others with a green check were rejected there. That's not exactly consistent. Why does the dog on the right pass but the cat on the left doesn't? And out of all those robots, why is only one accepted? Here's another early takeaway. The more human-like a face appears, the more likely Runway is to accept it. But there's no guarantee. That's why my recommendation is clear. Don't build your concept around a specific image unless you've tested it first. Otherwise, you'll waste time and credits if it gets rejected when it's time to generate the video. But even if Runway marks an image as usable, that doesn't mean it'll actually produce a decent result. I've seen some wild surprises, from subtle distortions to complete image meltdowns. In some cases, the output didn't resemble the original at all. Straight to the trash bin. Or as I like to call it, thanks Runway for letting me waste my credits on this mess. Let me show you a few examples, and the learning process that helped me unlock some surprisingly solid results with clips up to 30 seconds long. Just follow along, and you won't have to walk through the same valley of frustration and wasted credits. From the matrix I showed earlier, I picked eight different subjects and put them through a full workflow. The most entertaining part? Definitely filming myself swinging a mop, waving a fly swatter, or striking poses in gym shorts, all to act out different gestures and movements. These clips are what Runway calls the driving performance, the part that drives the animation. I'll explain how that works in detail right after we go through the examples. For now, let's begin with this four panel layout. Top left is the live action performance clip. Bottom left is the character input, which can be either an image or a video. And the top right shows the final result. As you watch, pay close attention to how well the movement syncs up between the two videos. That's exactly what Runway Act 2 promises to deliver. All the character inputs you'll see here were generated in mid-journey. And one more thing, take note of the big red number in some of the clips. That refers to facial expressiveness. I'll explain what that means a bit later. Example 1 really sets the tone. We're heading to ancient Egypt, where a friendly looking pharaoh, who honestly gives off a bit of surfer energy, checks in on the progress of his pyramid. He greets his workers with a wave, a thumbs up, and some applause. The hands do morph slightly, but overall, it feels remarkably lifelike. In the next clip, we switch to a robot on board, an interplanetary spacecraft. I gave it my best shot, trying to move like a machine. Stiff, mechanical, no human flow. But for whatever reason, the AI just didn't buy it. Interestingly, even though I used a character input that clearly had no face, Runway decided to give the robot a full set of facial features anyway. That wasn't part of the plan. Then there's example three, inspired by one of Runway's own demos. I originally recorded this motion for a black ghost-like creature with razor-sharp claws creeping through the darkness. But since Runway rejected that input, I reassigned the movement to a flight attendant on board a plane. 
she now carries the eerie vibe I had intended for the creature. And oddly, it works. And finally, one of my personal favourites, a boxer in a post-apocalyptic world. In my performance, I went all in. Aggressive, headstrong, like I'm shouting, come on then, you want something? The resulting character, gloves on, full stance, throws all his weight behind each move. It's just brilliant. If you know my work, you know I can't resist throwing a bit of fantasy into the mix. In the next example, I'm holding a fly swatter in the performance clip, swinging it like I'm about to strike. But Runway doesn't really get what I'm going for. The output places the character in a frozen wilderness, visually impressive, but more like pantomime than purposeful motion. It feels like the warrior is rehearsing moves for a battle that hasn't started yet. Example 6 uses the same aggro performance I used for the boxer, just to see how it plays out with a different type of character. This time it's a dog. He twitches, shakes a little, but the paws don't follow my gestures at all. The face picks up most of the energy, while the body stays passive. Still, for an animal like this, it's honestly not bad. And of course, I had to include a fruit. Mid Journey gave me this hilarious image when I prompted an orange with hair. I used the same calm performance as in the pharaoh scene. And since I don't speak in the video, and the orange has no hands, all the animation focuses on head motion. It's ridiculous, and I love it. In the final main example, and here I'm jumping ahead a little, I show you a stylized illustration of a woman with a very distinct look. The reason? You can adjust something in the settings called facial expressiveness. In option 1, I push that value to 5, which is the maximum. And you'll see what happens. Runway tries to turn the illustration into something hyper-realistic, shifting the entire visual style and forcing it toward a photoreal human. But if I drop the setting to 1, which is the minimum, the AI sticks more closely to the original look. It's a simple way to stop Runway from overriding your artistic style with its own assumptions. And just one last clip I want to throw in. This time I tried working with an object, a spear. In reality, it was just a mop I waved around while pretending to launch an epic attack. But the result? Not great. The motion didn't come through well at all. Still, there's this one brief moment where the character pulls a face like, what do you even want from me? It's unintentionally hilarious, but completely unusable. So here's my conclusion. Not every image works, and Runway is, let's say, pretty creative when it comes to changing things. There seem to be certain hidden rules. Figuring them out cost me nearly 2,000 credits. Maybe this saves you from doing the same. One rule that became pretty clear. The hands need to be fully visible in the character image. What worked best for me was adding a phrase like with his or her hands open on both sides in the prompt. That gives the AI something to work with, at least in my experience. For your performance video, the driving part, the face must stay fully visible the entire time. If you even briefly cover it with your hands, the upload might get rejected. So keep the focus on your hands and don't expect the AI to understand props or objects. At least in my tests, they were ignored entirely. And one last thing. The lower your facial expressiveness setting, the more likely it is that your original visual style will be preserved. But even that's not always consistent. So how does it all work? Let's take a quick look at Runway's help page. There you'll find two simple examples that explain the core logic. One shows the difference between using an image or a video as your character input. If you go with an image, the final result will closely follow your performance video. Body, gestures, overall motion. But if you choose a video instead, the animation focuses mainly on the face, while the rest sticks to the original input. When you create an Act 2 video, you also have the option to turn gesture control on or off, and that makes a difference. If gestures are on, the hand movements from your performance get transferred. If they're off, the AI focuses only on the face. That was the help desk. Now let's head over to the actual platform. Type in runwayml.com and click Get Started in the top right corner. If you're not logged in yet, do that first. You'll land right on the video generation page. First, make sure the correct model is selected in the lower left. In my tests, I noticed no difference between Gen 4 Turbo 
and regular Gen 4, neither in price nor in speed. Then click on Act 2. Upload your driving performance, the video that tells the AI how to animate the gestures and facial expressions. Runway will analyse your clip and tell you if it's usable. Do the same for the second field below. That's where you upload either a character image or a video. Again, it'll run a quick check. If it gets rejected, just try another image. Only when both inputs, performance and character, are approved, you can move on. Now you can adjust the aspect ratio. And right next to it, there's a key settings icon. First up, facial expressiveness. As mentioned earlier, lower values will better preserve the original style of your character. Below that, you'll find the gesture toggle. I'd recommend leaving it on. It really makes a difference. Close the settings panel and check the credit cost. It depends on the length of your performance video. In my case, it's 14 seconds, so that adds up to 70 credits, as of July 20th, 2025. Then hit Generate and cross your fingers. You can't enter a prompt in Act 2. It's all driven by performance and input. One last tip. If you get stuck, click the little speech bubble icon in the top right. That opens up the chat with the AI assistant. Just type something like Act 2 and it will guide you through it, even with follow-up questions. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.